All right, we're gonna run you through a uh, setup of the ACR, uh, some of the ins and outs, uh, some of the do's and don'ts here. Um, right here, you have the, the base, base unit. This is where your magnesium is going to go. It's a lower uh, pH chamber that will do a better job, supposedly, of uh, dissolving the uh, magnesium that you put in here. So uh, we're gonna start here. Make sure your gasket's seated and in place. Uh, on top of that, we are going to add um, the main chamber, which is right here. Background a little bit, hopefully we can still see that. You're gonna notice these, these screws here. Um, this end is not threaded, this end is threaded. We wanna be real careful not to um, uh, strip those threads out. Uh, if you do, it's not such a giant problem. You can just put a nice stainless screw all the way through, make sure it's long enough, and put a uh, like a nylon lock washer. Again, you'll want to do all stainless on the other side. Just tighten them down that way. Probably even better than uh, this current setup. Um, this little guy is it's a little premature to put this on here now, but I'm going to kind of show you where it goes. Um, we're going to set it here to make sure that these screws are lined up accordingly. Um, they are clocked so that they can only, they're, they're only gonna wanna go on there one way. So you wanna make sure your pump is uh, generally in place before you, uh, before you uh, tighten those down. Uh, and you do wanna tighten them down before you put the pump in place because some of them are a little hard to get to without that, that unit. So uh, when we're tightening these in place, we're going to, uh, got it lined up here, kind of all in there. We're gonna tighten them up a little bit. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way right now because uh, this is just getting together for shipping uh, and you're gonna to have to take it apart to fill it with all your media. So we're gonna tighten these. If you were tightening this for real, um, for, for use, for water, I would suggest getting them all to where they are snug, just kind of down to their fully in place. We'll do that real quick here. And then what I would suggest is um, tightening them on opposite ends first. And again, you don't want to strip them, so you just want to get them snug, but tighten these two, then these two, then these two, just going around in opposite directions until they're all so nice and snug. Maybe shift it around a little bit, make sure it's seated, get them on there, don't go crazy. Now, uh, we're gonna get this, this pump in place. This is really important that you see this. Um, these CJ pumps don't have uh, the best situation here. There's this little uh, fairing that goes over the, the volute here. Um, and uh, you can see that this is a this is actually a uh, female thread and this is a male thread. If you over tighten this, um, you know it's got to be tight because of the way the gasket works in there. But if you over tighten it, you're going to crack this. The good news is that th th they make those parts readily available. Bad news is they probably make them readily available because they just crack so easy. So I'm going to put that on there. It's in good shape. Um, put this back together. We're gonna put this in place. So shift this around a little bit so you can see a little bit better. You're gonna get this guy situated here. Tighten up these threads. Again, I'm not going, I'm not going crazy with this because we just wanna get it all in place. Uh, we wanna have it kind of loose to give ourselves a little bit of motion here. Uh, let's get this situated here. So now I'm tightening this top end here. Now, you want to be real careful when you're tightening this end, this union here. It's going to want to turn this, uh, which will tighten it down here. And again, you can crack it down here by doing that. So you really want to hold this with one hand while you tighten it with the other hand. So hold this, don't let it turn, tighten this end. Um, once that's all snug in place, uh, we're going to move on to the cap now, give you a little explanation of how this works. So again, this thing is, is machined really well, um, which means it's gonna fit on there nice, tight, leak-free. Um, 
it's also gonna be really hard to get off there. So uh, I suggest having somebody hold the reactor with two hands while you turn this off to get it off of the reactor. Um, it's one of those things that kind of like a, uh, like an RO system canister where the best thing is just firm, steady pressure and it'll just kind of break off and, and be loose at that point. Um, don't use anything to torque this off of here. Um, it really, it's gonna be tough, but if you give it nice, strong, steady pressure, it's gonna come off there. Uh, a little bit about this piece. Um, you'll have um, this deal right here, which is going to be facing down. Um, basically, that is so water, the effluent can go uh, down through this funnel looking piece and then up through the top and uh, out of this hole right here. That's where your effluent's gonna come out. This middle unit is a CO2 burp valve, uh, so you can release a little bit of the pressure in there every now and then and let fresh CO2 in. This valve right here uh, is your uh, CO2 input, okay? You'll, uh, I'll, that'll, we'll get more into that a little bit later. This right here is your float valve. Um, that goes up and down. When it goes up, it turns on the CO2, down, turns off the CO2. Uh, so we're gonna put this in place, screw it on there, and we'll get down to business here. So this little guy uh, is your venturi. This is going to be where the CO2 actually gets sucked in and pumped down through here and into the, the chamber. Uh, this unit right here, this some of these units are, are, are plumbed in a different way. It's all the basic same principle. This. Uh, little gadget is, is basically, it's essentially a CO2 manifold. So your CO2 is going to come from the controller to this check valve uh, into here. From here, it's gonna go into two places. Um, primarily, it's gonna go into this right side here. Push that in place. It's gonna go into that right side there. Uh, it's gonna fill this chamber once that, you know, when that valve goes up. Uh, turn the CO2, that for CO2 is going to get forced into here. It's also at the same time going to be forced into this venturi. That's going to constantly be kind of sucking water into, or sucking CO2 into the, uh, the uh, chamber here. So that's all in place. Again, this is a burp valve. This is going to be your water um, output, your effluent output. Uh, and this is going to be your water input down here. So this is where your water is going to come in from your tank. So uh, where we are at here now is controllers. So on these controllers, this is going to be your, your brain here. Um, you're going to have an on time and off time. On time is going to be how long you let that effluent run for. I think it's pre-programmed -pro to um, open up the valve and dump in two seconds of effluent uh, and then turn off for like 999 or 600 seconds. I don't even know. But basically you're going to have it programmed. You just use this, this set button and it'll tell you, I think you hold it for a second, then it blinks. You turn this down or up. If you're not getting enough alkalinity, you're gonna up the seconds that it dumps in uh, and possibly down the time. If you're getting too much, you're gonna down these seconds and possibly down that time. It just gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, over here is the, this is the plumbing module. So essentially you're gonna have uh, effluent coming from, this is going to your tank. So it's gonna come from this hole right here, which is coming through this, this uh, funnel here. It's gonna go up through that funnel, out this little guy, and it's gonna go to the from reactor. It's gonna go in this end and then it's gonna come out this end. Inside here is a pinch valve, which is gonna turn that on and off according to whatever you set on here. Uh, CO2 in. So CO2 in, this is gonna come from your tank. Uh, it's gonna come, you're gonna get this with the reactor. This is gonna hook up to your CO2 tank. Um, this, you to, to adjust this, you essentially, let me see if I can, do this without hurting myself here or it. So this little guy pops out 
and you can adjust it. It says pull to adjust, so you pull it out and you adjust it. Little plus and a minus tell you um, which is giving you more or less CO2. Um, and then you, once it's in place, you can lock it or you can leave it out. It's not really a big deal. Um, the tank pressure, you really shouldn't, you know, anywhere between four and 10 PSI. This is gonna tell you how full your actual tank is. And this is gonna be the pressure that's going to the reactor. Anywhere between four and 10 PSI is, is pretty much a safe operating pr pressure. Some people get a little bit heavier from the pressure, but uh, four to 10 is, is really where it's gonna need to be. So we're gonna go, this is gonna be attached to your CO2 tank. This is the CO2 line. This is going to go to the CO2 input here. Uh, you're gonna wanna use, I think yellow line, basically designate CO2. You can change that color scheme to whatever you like, but I am gonna send you some tubing. This is just a power supply for this unit right here. So CO2, gonna go CO2 in, and then this is your CO2 line to the reactor, which is going to plug into this check valve. Now this isn't the only check valve, Um, and they're not the best check valves in the world. I would suggest, you know, checking them here and there and making sure they're good. There's a check valve here. There's also a check valve inside this unit. I've seen units with some leaky issues. Um, aquarium engineering is, um, they're good about replacing stuff and making good on their products. They're not good about customer service. So we'll take, you know, plan on it taking a little bit. Um, there's lots of workarounds that you can eliminate this stuff um, and use different methods of controlling it, including an apex or building your own controller. Um, a lot of them, if not all of them, work better uh, and are prettier than these, but these do work um, and they'll te teach you a lot about the basic principles. Always good to have. So um, we've got our CO2 connected. Um, we don't have a tank here, so CO2 tank is gonna hook up to this. This is gonna connect to the CO2 in. This is going to go to the check valve on the reactor. Uh, effluent, you're gonna use blue line for effluent. That's gonna be your, your, your calcium alkalinity, all the good stuff. That's gonna go from here uh, to the, from the reactor side. And then this is gonna go to your tank. Uh, this little power plug, little DC power plug is going to attach to this little DC power plug. And that is going to uh, allow the float switch to communicate with this box. That's going to tell the uh, CO2 to turn on and off right in here. So you have another, then you have a pneumatic valve in here that controls that CO2. That's what in, inside here is where that other uh, check valve is. So you wanna keep an eye on that, check it out every now and then, make sure there's no leaks. This is the water from your tank. So this is going to be like, if you have a gravity feed um, or a um, which can be tricky to do, or if you have a, a dedicated feed pump or a tee off, there's lots of ways to do it. Um, I suggest a dedicated, very small pump, like a CJ 0.5, like just minimal amount of pressure, dedicated, always pushing water into this. Um, you should be fine. Uh, if you have too much water pressure going into this, you can create a CO2 lock kind of situation. Um, that's another story. Um, again, got your reactor. We're going to be real careful of this bit right in here, not to over tighten this. Make sure we hold it when we're tightening this. Um, this thing is, is really built like a tank. It's a good unit. It's a giant. Um, I think they recommended it for, uh, from anywhere from hundred to 600 gallons, something like that. Um, I've seen them on eight hundreds, no problem. And I've seen them on one hundreds, uh, barely trickling and doing everything they're supposed to do. Um, I'm a fan of the unit, not a fan of uh, Aquarium Engineering's uh, service. I think they've got some real kinks to work out. Um, and uh, there's plenty of those stories all over the place. But if you know what you're doing with these things, you can really have a lot of flexibility in how you run it uh, and do some really great stuff with them. They're really amazing.